Hey, welcome to Ideas for UK DJs Part 2. I'm going to talk about customer service today. I'm going to try to define it a bit. I think there's a bit of a misunderstanding. I think uh, several people in the UK have perceived American customer service as being overly friendly and schmoozy. At least that's what I was getting on Facebook and in the comments section of the last video. And I want to let you know that that's the furthest thing from the truth. Let me talk about something that annoys me, because it does indeed annoy me. I kind of have a laugh about it, actually. Now, about two blocks up the road, we have a Starbucks, and I go to it a lot. And there's a guy that works at the Starbucks that I call Awesome Jake. I'll go to the drive-thru, and he'll come on. Hey, welcome to Starbucks. My name is Jake. What can I get started for you today? Yeah, I'll have a Vente Mocha Frappuccino, please. Awesome, that's 525. Come on up to the window. And you go to the window, and you hand this guy a five dollar bill and a quarter which is 525 awesome you know the fact that I had exact change at Starbucks isn't awesome perhaps Jake should save the word awesome for things like I don't know the Grand Canyon maybe a comet the birth of his first child witnessing this that's awesome to me the fact that I had exact change isn't awesome at all I went in one day and I'd never seen Jake, you know, as a, a counter guy. I went into the Starbucks, and my daughter and I were in there, and, and he said his name was Jake. I said, oh, my God, it's Awesome Jake. He said, what? I said, you're Awesome Jake. We call you Awesome Jake. Why? I said, because you say awesome all the time. Well, the last time I went through the drive-thru and Jake came on the microphone, he didn't say awesome. I think I actually pointed it out to him. I don't think he knew he was doing this. You know, and the thing is, is that as fake and goofy as Jake was, and I made fun of Jake and probably gave him a bit of a complex about his awesome thing, I would rather have awesome Jake than someone who was nasty and resentful that they were at a job at all or that I had approached the counter. So yes, you can go too far with it. You can be overly nice and fake and stupid, but you don't have to be. If you're just being yourself, your good self, your friendly self, then I think you do pretty well. But is that really customer service? No, that is not really customer service. A lot of the DJs that I've spoke to, and not all, a lot of people have taken offense. Oh, you're putting us all in a, you know, in one big group. No, a lot of DJs that I've talked to personally in England and on Facebook from England have told me they're not making a lot of dough and they don't know how they can, you know, improve. I've suggested that you need to do something that's bigger and better than the next guy down the road, otherwise you're never going to make more money. Forget about your skill set as a DJ. Think about the services you offer to the client. Now, I know that a lot of DJs just show up and play music. And, you know, that's okay. If that's who you want to be, that's fine. But maybe you're not worth any more than 150 quid if that's all that you do. You have to add value. And the way you can add value, like I said in the last video, is indeed customer service. And some of the things that you can do is actually meet with the client. I suggested that. I suggested meeting at, here we go again, Starbucks because it's a neutral location. You can have a nice cup of coffee and stay for a while. Someone made the comment to me, well, what if your client doesn't want to meet it and they just want to talk over the phone? If we insisted that they meet, then we're not really providing good customer service. Well, hold on a minute. Look, you don't have to provide less customer service because the customer may not have time to meet with you or can't or doesn't want to. You just have to provide good customer service in another way. And we still haven't really defined it yet. What we need to do is be the experts in what we do. We need to help these people. A lot of times, I'll have clients call me, for instance, and say, look, we want to do this. We really don't know what we're doing. Can you help us? They don't know. They've never done a wedding before. And, and those are my favorite clients because they're actually, you know, asking me for advice. They're not trying to guess what to do or tell me what's what about something they've read in a book or something they're, they're, somebody told them. They're actually talking to me and recognizing me as the professional. And those really, again, are my favorite kind of clients. And I tell them all the same thing. Look, there are no rules. We can do this however you want. But let me get some information from you, and we'll put together a nice timeline or flowchart for the evening, and then I start asking them questions. 
things like, and I've talked about this before, are you having a cocktail hour? What time is dinner? How many people? Sit down at a buffet. Do you want a grand entrance? Is there a prayer? How many toasts are there? I take all this information and I use what I know as a DJ and professional, what I've seen over you know my years of experience, and I put together a flow chart or a timeline. Flow chart just sounds nicer than timeline. It's really more of a timeline of the evening. Not exact times, but I get everything in there, every song, every activity, every name, everything in this chart. Real simple, easy to read, and I send it to them. And I say, have a look at what I've put down here. Let me know if you want to make any changes. I will make suggestions to the client. I will say things to them like, okay, are you having a cake? You know, because sometimes they don't do cake anymore. Sometimes they do just like, a, you know, finger food desserts or cupcakes or something. If they do have a cake, my second question is, is it a cake that catering has to cut up to serve for dessert? If their answer is yes, then what I always suggest that they do is cut the cake when they come into the room for dinner, before dinner. Why do I suggest this? Well, I suggest this because it will give catering plenty of time to cut the cake up and get it ready to serve for dessert. If we wait until after dinner to cut the cake, then catering has to rush and try to get this done and it makes things run long and they get less dance time. I know this. The client doesn't know this or doesn't realize this. The catering department doesn't always even click with them that it needs to be done this way. But I know it needs to be done this way and I'll suggest this to the client. Now, the client can say, I don't want to do it that way and that's fine. They don't have to. I'm not the boss. I'm just the coach. I'm trying to provide them with good customer service. You want to make sure that the customer is comfortable with you. That's good customer service, too. They need to know that you're going to handle this job for them. You need to convince them of that. And again, it's a good idea to help them out. That's just one aspect of it. We'll expand on it in another video, but I wanted to get that out of the way. I want everybody to understand that customer service is just being fake and schmoozy or whatever. It's just about helping the client in using your expertise to help make their event as successful as possible. We'll see you next time. Practice and enjoy.